and he was surprised, yet horrified at how Klaus was running. It was like he was running for his life. And he looked behind him, then back at Klaus. Those eyes, those mad eyes. They still had a look of brain-ripping madness in them. This went for an eternity, it felt like. And throughout all of this, he had to ask, Why was he sprinting like... They felt cold afternoon air shoot their way as they burst through the barn door when they saw pinks and oranges. Have they really been there for that long? And he found himself at the floor. He couldn't see Klaus. Instead of arms, he felt grass. Once he finally caught his breath, he turned to where Klaus had been and called out. Klaus? When he finally found him, Klaus was still trying to run from the thing that wasn't there. But with a hand he had left just on the, sit there, gripping the grass. And he suddenly got up, reluctantly walking towards Klaus, reaching a hand out, asking, Hey, Klaus, you do know that there was nothing chasing us, right? Klaus shot up absentmindedly in a blind panic. But yes! <laughs> Klaus swelled around, hand out in gesture. And just as Andy said, I could have swore I heard it. I could just... Klaus stared at the abyss that had been his hell, and he went to his side. You must have heard listening to all that when you were running, he said, putting a gentle hand on his shoulder. Klaus shook his hand in disbelief, taking his friend's but hand. But how? Out. He, broke he broke my brain! He broke my head for goodness sake! He had to be real! He has to be! He shouted in denial, his eyes watering. His immediate look of frustration turned to a, turned to a look of hysterics. This can't be... After being so eager to do the worst, it was all in his head. Even Peter? A way to end his brain's torment. All in his head? Klaus's disbelief and horror were immeasurable. Please. It had to be real. It had to be. Without warning, Klaus felt warm arms encase him. Klaus did not struggle or fight. He just sat there, staring infinitely. Klaus's fists unclenched, his rage turning into tiredness and misery. After a while, Klaus spoke, using his wrist to hide his face. Something that broke the brain. I'm horrible to you all, and this is how I repay as an apology? How? How are you so accepting of this? Why me? Why, the one who thinks he's the most humorous clock in the fucking world? Me, who really locks you in the barn? Tell me, Andy, tell me! Andy stroked at Klaus's chest. Klaus's eyes were whining after what Andy said next. Because I'm your best friend. You're my best friend. Klaus stared. Immediately, his, his eyes began to overflow like water behind a brick wall breaking its shield. This time, Klaus stayed silent, and he felt Klaus's ch ch chest burst forth, along with occasional, occasional sniffles and regular breathing, and he began to rock Klaus back and forth. One of them broke the silence. Andy. He's not there. I'll make sure of it. This time, the silence stirred, with only a few moments of them exchanging looks with each other. And as they walked back, they were holding hands. Klaus and Andy had never held hands like that before. Yeah, sure they liked hands, but never properly held hands. And once they finally, finally found the usual picnic tables they once sat at, Martin was there. Klaus stood surprised at how, well, miserable? Spiteful he seemed? Martin ca caught a glance, his small snout wrinkled in fury. Ears <clears throat> pulled back. What the fuck have I just... just... Martin's snap trailed off. Upon seeing a familiar clown-nosed face, Andy smiled, eyeing to Klaus. Klaus. Klaus's tired eyes ignited something in Martin. He shook his hand in disbelief, then shot over, wrapped, up, wrapped, in up, wrapped around him, and in relief and anger yelled, You fucking idiot! His voice was slightly muffled. Then pulling away, 
Teary eyed, he scolded. How could you fucking leave us like that? Yeah, it's all words sick. Across his broken voice, fired up Martin even more. I'm so sorry, all of you. For everything. On power Klaus's head, he shot around him, around him again. Klaus twiddled his fingers, his tired eyes nervous. He was beginning to realise how much he reeked of. Oh, he didn't know. Ban acid? Andy seemed to notice. Hey, you, you've got my smell. <laughs> Klaus gave Andy a side smile. Nothing more was said as Matt knocked on the door of, of a particular little moon. There had been shouting going on inside. Just right after he knocked, one rough and low, one soft and cute. The commotion had an eye roll and a head shake that screamed typical from Martin. When the voices got closer, they opened the door and talking. I'm really sorry about him. He can be a bit... She looked to all of them, <laughs> twisting a pink nose. She yelps, clasping two hands in her, in her mouth. Hey, yup, you're not saying things. Martin assured. This is the real clockwork Klaus. He's As Martin said this... And he wrapped a hard arm around Klaus, pulsing two times, both of them letting out a little laugh. The moon girl's eyes watered, her hands slightly exposing her mouth. Oh, you do? She called behind her. That were a voice called back, but two participants came to see. <gasps> what? Both went immediately silent, but one of them, after a while, smiled at her. The news of it seemed to be a dragon, demon, of some sort, which brought a slight surprise to everyone. This old stranger was once a little bee, but maybe things have changed after all. Now she was the owner of, of longer antennas and new formed small tusks. All were silent until- You better not be fucking with us, said familiar purple fish. He ran to Klaus. Klaus was alert, but then relieved as Felix shot, in, shot to Klaus, crushing him in a hug. Klaus received something wet leak onto his shoulder. Klaus, after a while, embraced back, while everyone else was joining, the demon bee's wings wrapping around them.